Welcome to an epiphany with Tiffany. My name is Tiffany and I've just had an epiphany. This podcast is all about Christian singles looking for community. Christian dating can be quite a mess these days. I'll share stories from my guests and practical tips for successful love. Dating shouldn't be this hard, right? So grab your favorite snack or drink and curl up with this episode and you might just have an epiphany of your own. I haven't talked about the whole like age, the age issue in the sense that like when a guy looks younger or a girl looks younger or, you know, whatever, because there's that question of like if Uh a guy is 50 but looks young, like, you know, how do you do the approach? So let's jump in there because I feel like that's still something that's important to kind of let God or let guys hear from women's perspective yeah sorry i was trying to find that question on my thing oh Um, um yeah i think i mean honestly i mean just even starting off though i look i look younger than i am because i'm actually 43 years old Mm -hmm. so i look actually younger i mean i pass for my mid-30s a lot of times so i understand when a guy looks younger and stuff like that too um it also depends on them too i think that if they are you know if they're active if they're you know athletic, if they are moving around a lot or willing to do a lot, you know, willing to be adventurous and stuff like that. I think that makes a huge difference Mm -hmm. within that perspective of, you know, just because you're older, some, some women are younger than a guy that's 50 could approach me thinking I'm 35, but also I'm 43, you know what I mean? But I move, I'm at the gym a lot, you know, I'm working out a lot. So I don't look my age. It's kind of fun, you know, I mean, to not look my typical age as well. So I think (laughs) that's where best way to approach him. I just be honest though depending on what type of approach, if they're wanting to date somebody. Now, just be honest and be like, them. start out by being a friend, though. I think that's the important thing first is you've really mm-hmm. got to establish a friendship first. You can flirt, you know what I mean, and establish that, you know, but get interested and figure out what they are interested in as well. And I think that makes a huge difference if there's a lot of camaraderie in the same interests, though. I mean, if in, with an age difference, I think that makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. I think there's got to be a lot of camaraderie as far as they've got to like similar things, you know, I and mean? they've got to be, you know, otherwise it's not really the age will, uh, will be affected, you know, that will be a difference that will mm-hmm. be harder for men there, I think, in that perspective. Yeah, so. I totally agree. And ironically, I met a couple on my adventurous trip to North Carolina <laughs> this past <laughs> week where she was 23, mm-hmm. he was 35. Okay. And I was like, okay. Okay. And, but, you know, I was like, I'm not judging, (laughs) you know, like, I'm like, if that works for you guys, all right. And so she was like, well, this is how it works because, like, she, which I kind of figured out, like, throughout conversation, she is extremely mature. I actually would not have put her at 23. She does look young. But again, I know that a lot of us look younger than we are and Mm -hmm. all that. So I wasn't assuming that she was even that young. I probably would have put her at like at least 26, you know, Uh just based on the conversation. And so then she's like, no, and I just turned 23 and I'm like, holy Toledo. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. He said, I'm, it's not that I'm not mature. It's that. I tend to be more carefree and like, yes, I have my stuff together, but I kind of live life from this, you know, perspective of it doesn't have to be so serious all the time and I can have fun Mm -hmm. and like whatnot. So she was like, yeah, it's great because that kind of matches with the two of them. And I'm all, huh? Yes. Yep. Yep. That I wouldn't have thought of because, you know, society is like, oh, the age matters. And I'm like, but does it? (laughs) I really, I really don't think it does. I mean, honestly, I mean, I know, I don't know if you've ever heard of Bobby Bones um, from, he did, he won Dancing with the Stars. Yes. He and his wife are 11 years apart and they make it do, but there's a maturity that Caitlin has that I've, you know, that I really respect of her. And she's actually, you know, she's got her master's. She was going for, you know, a lot of schooling and he admired that. And I saw that he really, she really brought him uh, do a different level, you know, of maturity. Cause I think he was not immature, but he just definitely has more of the carefree kind of like you said, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, so they just match each other really well. And I feel like that makes a difference. Yes. The age is kind of like a little bit of a surprise sometimes for some people, but as long as it works for the couple, I think that's where it makes a huge difference. You know? Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. And I get the like, perspective of guys especially nowadays going like I don't want to approach because if she finds out I'm this age I don't want to come off a certain way right but at the same time it's like we can't you can't assume how she's going to respond just because Uh of other women responding that way (laughs) in the past Mm -hmm. you know 
I mean, and she might let you down in a very, very nice way. Or she might be like, okay, that's cool. Like I, I might not be interested, but I actually have older friends. That still yeah. in and of itself could be a good connection. So, oh yeah. And it's important to have those, even if it's just a friendship, it's important to have good connections because you can also learn from each other. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, even learning about relationships from each other is just friends even is important as well. Yeah, I agree. I have learned way more from like just the different age groups of friends that I have than anything else. So, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Yeah. It's, you know, that I feel like that's the the beauty of community in and of itself is you, we're not supposed to go through life alone and, you know, God's going to use different people in our lives at different points in times to teach us, you know, everything, (laughs) all these different things. So yeah, I I think the age thing. Yeah. I definitely think the age thing needs to be just kind of not as big of a deal as it is made out to be. (laughs) Yes, that's very true. That is very true. And I think it has to do a lot with society, though, just, you mm-hmm. know, the way we're quote, raised, you know, and ta- taught, you know, growing up. And I think that yeah. makes a huge difference with our backgrounds as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is true. And like the I've noticed with like because I have some family and friends that are like at that tail end of like Gen X beginning of millennials. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like middle millennial, (laughs) you know, and then like family members of mine are like on that cusp of millennial Gen Z. And so it's just like this huge gap, what feels like a huge gap in a lot of ways, but then, you know, we can all teach each other different things, but it's just the, Mm -hmm. what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Like the ability to have frank conversations and and realize that just because somebody's in Gen Z doesn't mean they can't teach somebody some or can't teach somebody that's in Gen X something or vice versa. And just realizing that we've all been through different things in life and like age, you know, it does matter to an extent in that aspect, but still somebody that's in like a younger group can still have gone through so much more than somebody that's in an older group. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And yeah. so anyway. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's really good. It's just kind of like I struggle sometimes to get like when we focus too much on the oh I've been through more life than you so I know more it doesn't doesn't really fly with me I guess is mm-hmm. you know the other point that I'm trying to make it yeah you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's good that's good <laughs> I love the friend question I was happy that 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 one came through of like can guys and girls be friends I <laughs> I hate when people say that they can't because I'm like, you obviously don't know how to have boundaries. <laughs> yeah, and that's true. That's very true. And it depends on the, I mean, perfect example of, you know, I told him some few things and set boundaries with him and he was kind of like, okay, there's, then we'll just be friends certain ways. And, you know, I mean, just that's it, you know, we can't date or whatever. And it's understandable. There's those boundaries that you would just have to know and understand. I have a dear friend that I've known for 12 years. He's part of my life group. He's a friend, you know what I mean? We're just there's no interest on either side, you know, mm-hmm. we've gone on friend dates before, you know, and I mean, it's fine. We do it all the time. He's my co-leader with the life group, you know, that's, we've just been friends. That's all there is to it. I mean, we just hang out. We do. There's the simplicity of it, knowing that I can ask him questions and mm-hmm. he'll also be friend and that's it. There's no pressure from him either as well. That makes a huge difference. Oh, for sure. And I've been having these conversations with with all the women so far, like the degree that the guys and girls can be friends. And it comes back to the point of we're still brothers and sisters in Christ, period. Yep. So like, why can't we have that kind of relationship? Because, you know, you have boundaries with your brother too, or <laughs> cousins or, you know, whatever, like you boundaries are so important, but <laughs> like you can still have those relationships and it not be a, an issue, you know, as mm-hmm. far as like oversharing or talking about things that, that you just don't talk to, you know, members of the opposite sex about, um, unless yeah. they're your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. You can, if we look at it from that perspective of this is my brother, how can I honor him as Christ would call me to honor this other person, you know, mm-hmm. then there should be no problem. Yeah. And period. that's, a, that's a conversation. I think that a lot of people sadly don't have because they haven't been raised in that mindset of understanding of it either, you know, mm-hmm. don't have that understand it's either you can or you can't that's, you know, but I do believe that you can 100%, you know? Yeah, I agree. 
I don't know. I haven't scrolled down. So I don't know how, what your relationship with purity culture was, but like, I feel like purity culture affected that aspect of it. You know, like you can't be, mem- we can't be friends with the members of opposite sex because, you know. Yeah. I think, I mean, I was raised in a lot of that kiss d- dating goodbye. You know, I follow Josh Harris and follow him a little bit now, even where he's at and where mm-hmm. he's, gone you know on and since then and stuff like that and his ex-wife and his kids and stuff like that and yes I feel like I I was raised a lot in that but I do feel like it I mean it affected me some but at least not in that aspect you know Mm. as far as I mean I've had guy friends I mean I guess that's just I've had a lot of friends that you know I love dearly as just friends who I knew were just always going to be friends so I think that really did that aspect of it didn't affect me that much with the purity culture because I was raised 100% and all that you know what I mean yeah a lot. <laughs> but I guess it kind of grew out of it and or I had a lot of guy friends it just kind of was part of my life you know growing up too I was around a lot of boys I had a lot of boy cousins you know a lot more boy cousins than I do girl cousins so I think that also made a difference you know being mm-hmm. involved with family and stuff like that yeah that's yeah. huge I mean I have friends that you know, don't have that. They don't have like a huge extended family. And so I can see how that would be, you know, would play a role in Mm -hmm. how somebody can develop those relationships with the opposite sex, you know, Mm -hmm. because she's just, I mean, she's better now, but (laughs) like, (laughs) like when she was younger, you know, we were talking about that. She's like, I don't know how to talk to guys. And I was like, girl, I am the girl that has always had guy friends, but if it's a guy I'm attracted to, just no. (laughs) <laughs> like if it's friendship, I am fine. I will yeah. talk your ear off. But if I'm attracted to you, I'm just like, la, 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 la. like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I think it makes a difference though, too, when you do have brothers, even actual brothers too. I think that makes yeah. a huge difference. You know, I grew up with my brother's friends and yes, I had crushes on them, you know what I mean? Sometimes, but you know, I think that makes a huge difference of having actual, actual brothers in your life because you're raised in that different culture. You know what I mean? Having mm-hmm. not just, you have an understanding of how to talk to brothers and how your brothers can be annoying, how your brothers can be your best friends, you know, in yeah. that aspect, you know, I think that makes a huge difference and gives you a better understanding of guys and, you know, boys even too. And then they grow up to be guys. <laughs> That makes a difference. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I have two brothers, but they're just both younger. So for me, like, I mean, the one is like, we're really close in age, but mm-hmm. the other one is like way younger. And so <laughs> I, I definitely think that that did help. Like you're saying, like, because I was the girl that had like all these guy friends, but you know, it was still just kind of funny to see me transitioning from like that teen to like young twenties. Uh-huh. Right. And the whole, okay, I got to figure this all out now. And like, what if I'm attracted to my friend and I'm just going to be awkward, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you yeah. Get it? Yep. yeah. And so it's just like, uh, cause that was still, that was still just, I, well, it might've been just at the tail end of like the purity culture stuff, mm-hmm. you know? And so it was just kind of like, well, now you're out in the real world. So we haven't really given you any practical skills, but here you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Like, here you go. You're going to have to try and talk to guys now because you're supposed to be married by a certain age. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you you really do think that. I mean, and it's sad that it was such a push of, you know, a culture, a, pu- a culture push. I mean, it was, it literally was a huge push, but I mean, it's, it's unique how different our journey is, you know what I mean? That what we thought, you know, we should have been and culture told us we should have been, but how it's changed so much more and Mm -hmm. become evolved into something way different than what we even expected. I think. Oh, I totally agree. And I was telling one of the ladies earlier, I'm like, if 22 year old me had married the guy I was interested in at that point, I don't think we would have made it. Yeah. You know, and Mm -hmm. like, that's just, the God's honest truth. Like, I don't think because like where I am now versus who I was at 22. I mean, I know we all change, right? Like that's what I'm saying. It's just the, he wasn't, I don't think ever going to be the guy that I do need, if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so God definitely protected me back then, which is great. Um, you know, now do I still want to be married? Heck yes. And am I sad that I'm still single? Yes. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I've grown a lot. I'm having a fun time and it's okay. 
It'll happen if it's supposed to happen when God wants yeah. it to yeah. happen. <laughs> God's timing, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Okay. I'm glad that like you shared that perspective, though, about purity culture, just because it's, you know, because you're a little bit older than me, but I wasn't sure like how much that affected you because I know how much it was. Oh, yeah. You know? It 100% affected me. I mean, like I said, I was an avid reader. So I read the book. I kissed dating goodbye, you know, which was the big I read Rebecca St. James's book because she was oh, also yeah. a big part of that as well, too. Between her and Josh Harris, you know, I mean, they were two big names, at least in the purity culture, popular Christianity purity culture that was you know, advertise, I guess you could honestly say it was kind of advertised, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, Hey, read this. And then there was another couple, um, I can't remember their names at the time, but they also did a lot of it, but yeah, it did have definitely affect me, but I think that makes a huge difference too. Of, I believe I'm stronger for that. And I've learned and I've grown through that. It's really made me better. Cause I've learned a lot more from what, what could have been, like you said, what could have been, you know what I mean? I feel like I've really changed a lot and become out, come out better on top, you know what I mean? Of the situation of I've become a stronger woman of God because I know what I am. I know who I am. I know what right. I want. Like you said, I don't want, it wouldn't have worked out. If I'd gotten married when I was younger, I don't think it would have, I wouldn't have been as happy what, mm-hmm. you know, God, called me to do now. I've enjoyed my single life and I anticipate the time that when in God's timing of getting married, but I feel like, you know what I mean? I I do wonder sometimes I'm like, no, I, my life would be totally different. I would have had kids and I don't know what I would have done. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have done what I've been able to do now. You know, I've been able Mm -hmm. to do a lot of things and I'm like, wow, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that. You know, and I feel like not in a bad way, but I'm glad where I'm at, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Like I, you know, looking back on things, in the, especially in the last like four years, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just like, I feel like I've grown leaps and bounds since I turned 30. And so I've, I will always want to be a mom. Like I've mm-hmm. always had that, had that heart desire and I've always wanted to be a wife. And so I know that that won't ever change, but mm-hmm. the growth that I've had in the last four years is like, it's just insane to me to think about myself at 30 and think of where I am now. Like, I, you know, again, I would love yeah. to to find my person tomorrow. <laughs> you know yes. what I mean? Like, we all. <laughs> yes. And just, it would just be great. At the same time, I become way more okay with the fact that it hasn't happened. Again, every time a situation ship ends, I'm like, oh, Lord, please, really? Again, like now again, I have to start all over. But that, I just have to remind myself that that's him protecting me from something. You know, what even if I don't know what it is in that moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes I think we don't, we feel like we want to know because we're curious. We are just part of our, who our human nature, but I feel like sometimes God's like, no, you don't ever need to know. And you will not know. <laughs> and I think that's just this way of, like you said, of protecting us and not letting us be concerned about other things and letting us be just focused on where he's calling us to go, you know, mm-hmm. and where he's mm-hmm. us and what he's calling us to do in the future, you know, in your future relationships, et cetera. Yeah. Agreed. Like we, I've been mentioning this a lot, but it's fine. Uh, (laughs) In all the interviews so far, but it's like, we don't know what God has for our future. Right. Mm -hmm. And I personally am just like, I would rather, you know, wait to find somebody that I'm wholeheartedly confident in, in the sense that like, I know that they're not going to walk away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And because life is life is hard. <laughs> it, it is. I mean, it 100 percent is. I mean, God never said life would be easy either. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I love uh, it's the song by Hoda, I want to say, or it's it's a song that was on Good Morning America. But I, I know I'm butchering Jennifer or somebody. It's a really cute song, but they talk about choosing. You know what I mean? It's a it's a it's a sweet little song, but it talks about choosing and how we choose our people. You know what I mean? And I feel mm-hmm. like I want chosen by somebody and I want to choose my husband, but I want him to choose me daily. Like you said, I want chosen daily that he chooses me, that he wakes up and says, Hey, you know, I choose you because I love you. You know, I want you to be my wife. I want to be, I want you to be my best friend. You know what I mean? And I know it's not always going to be, you know, games (laughs) and fun and games the whole time. I know that, you know, I've seen my parents go through ups and downs, you know, but I do know that I want the relationship to be that, you know, the future eventually, you know, I mean, when it happens in God's timing and that's the thing is choosing, you know, being able to choose my person in a good way that he chooses me back, you know, I don't Mm -hmm. want it to a one-sided thing of, and hopefully it works, you know, fingers crossed. No, I want to know that God's timing and, you know, that it happens for 
you know, his purpose as well. Yeah. And the, I feel like this ties into the whole question of like, do you believe that there's just a one for you? <laughs> <laughs> that's your question right there I'm like ah, that's funny I know right yes. <laughs> I'm like no no it's no. just that's not a thing yeah no I mean uh, no it wouldn't otherwise I might have missed him I, I would have I would have missed him probably 20 years ago you know mm-hmm. I mean it's 100% no I believe that they're you know I mean had I gotten married at 22 you know give or so it would have been a different person it would have been a different guy but now that I'm gonna get married in my 40s probably you know what I mean give or take it's gonna be a different person you know what I mean there's mm-hmm. I believe that if if you whenever you get married that there's a time and season of the guy that's God's got for your life at that point whenever you and him you and God decide you're ready you know what right. I mean but it's it doesn't make a difference. I really feel like, you know, that there's one person, otherwise I would have lost him a long time ago, <laughs> long time ago. My guys passed me up, you know what I mean? Or I passed him up, whatever, you know, because mm-hmm. otherwise you know, there's nobody perfect because there's no perfect relationship either. And I think that makes a difference right there is, you know, there's no perfect. Yeah. There's no perfect. And society telling us that there is, is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's so funny. Funny. I'll go ahead. Or no, no, I was just saying that's very true. So you're good. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I know it's all cultural and I know that it's lies from the enemy and it's like, it's the spiritual warfare of, you know, um, trying to keep people from, in my opinion, possible like relationships because they don't match this or that or like whatever, you know, and now there are hard, like hardcore things, right? Because we all have our... We all have our core values. We all have our core convictions and you have to kind of be, you have to be equally yoked in those aspects, I feel like. So, you know, but there's still some, there's some gray area in there, I feel like too, with certain issues, (laughs) you know, there's things that you can kind of go, okay, we need to talk about this, but it's not necessarily going to be a huge deal breaker. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that society, Christian society, men and women get stuck on this. Well, they have to check every single box. And if they don't, they're not my person. And it's like, that's not, that's not how it works. And it can work with somebody as long as like your gray areas aren't going to cause big issues down the line, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or you're going to be willing to work through those gray areas. Either way, yes. you have to be willing to compromise on them. You know, I was reading an article talking about compromise and it's, you know, I was talking to one of my friends too about the same thing. It's compromise. It's either pick and choose, you know what I mean? Pick your battles. But also I feel like kind of looping back around with what you were saying about society, especially though, I feel like right, not Christianity society, but society in general, just rising. Yeah. They don't want us to re- procreate. That's the comes what it comes down to. In other words, you know what I mean? They don't want that. I think it, that's, that's where Christianity has taken a stand saying, yeah, you know, God has called us to procreate and to have, you know, relationships and marriages and stuff like that. And I think that's so important that we bring it back to the church because I feel like sadly the church is as, as bad statistics as, you know, the world with divorce rate. It's sad, but I feel like we need to start focusing on our values and our relationships even more so, you know what I mean? Understanding that it's, it is give and take, you know what I mean? I know that there is some instances that are going to happen. You sadly can't change somebody's mind. If somebody chooses divorce, you know, that's in the Christian relationship, you know, in a Christian marriage, then that's their choice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I do feel like that we need to focus more on marriages. I feel like we need to focus more as, especially as those of us that are single, you need to really evaluate, you know what I mean? Our relationships when we choose to get married, you know what I mean? And under have a better understanding, knowing what we're walking into and not walking into it. Just like you said, you know, at 22, it wouldn't have lasted. You know what I mean? I want my marriage to last. I feel like I have a more wisdom understanding of, you know, what I can do to make myself better for my future husband. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Something I really want. I want to make myself even better because I want to have an understanding because I don't. And yes, I know, like I said, marriage, I mean, sometimes divorce has happened. We can't control all that. You know what I mean? But I do feel like that what I can control, I want to understand and make sure that I'm giving my best foot forward to my husband, you know, preparing my heart, myself for that future someday when it does happen. You know, and I think that's where sometimes I feel like Christianity doesn't always promote that as much. I feel like we can do better with that, especially in our single community that we are. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yep. You can just keep on preaching about that. (laughs) (laughs) 
I 1000% agree. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually in a 24 too, I was offered a book, you know I mean? It's not a Christian book, but I was like, but it was really cool. It was on attachments. It really gave me such a different perspective, especially, especially with women. We have a tendency to do attachments and our attachment. There's three main attachments is the basically the push away, the, um, I don't know the exact names, but it's basically you, you push somebody away constantly on a regular basis. You just don't want to be close to them. You know I mean? Mm -hmm. The other one just kind of, you're happy, go lucky. You, you understand who you are, you're confident. And the other one is the third attachment is a, is basically a secure attachment of basically where women, a lot of women, you know I mean? I'm one of them too, that I'm understanding myself. It's just, it's easy to latch onto men and be like, okay, he's the one. And then you know what I mean? And then it's just, it's not the right emotions. It's not that we attach ourselves too much and then we become infatuated and it really hurts our relationships, even friendships with guys, mm -hmm. our attachment that we have upon, you know, people, just even people in general too. And it makes a huge difference. I've realized, you know, reading that book and just the understanding of the attachments of how we operate in just in our lives, you know, and it's made a huge difference. I've really learned a lot. I love that. You know what I mean? I, I'm becoming better for myself, you know what I mean? And my future husband after reading these books that I'm getting, you know what I mean? It's making me feel better because I'm, I feel like I'm growing myself, preparing my heart for eventual future marriage, you know, that will happen. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And it's so, it's so important. And I feel like, you know, again, like the generational thing <laughs> where those of us who are like in our forties and thirties, like we have boomer parents, right. Yep. And Nothing against them, mm -hmm. but their generation didn't know how to do anything <laughs> as far as like, you know, like the emotional stuff. Right. And just I love my parents, just, but, you know, yeah. there were things that were brought in from their parents generation that, you know, they passed down to us. And it's like, OK, how do we as my siblings, you know, kind of learn from that not blaming anybody just understanding that that's what happened how are we going to change it for our future children yeah you oh. know and, and what does that look like mm -hmm. individually and as a family you know and because that's the only way <laughs> that things change right is having self-awareness and discernment and understanding in like how things take place or like, in, like how things happen, you know, and then what you're going to do to change it. Because I feel like that connects into repentance too. You know, like if we have like this big, huge sin issue that we're trying to heal from, mm -hmm. right? What what steps are we going to take to to not continue to go back to that? It's just, in yeah. my in my mind, it's the same thing of like if you're trying to change something that's generational in your family, mm -hmm. what steps are you taking to change that? Yep. You know, like what boundaries yep. are you putting up? What who are you staying away from? <laughs> you know, what temptation? <laughs> that's a big one. Uh, <laughs> you know, like. How are you, are you, do you have an accountability partner? You know, just mm -hmm. what are those practical steps that we're going to take to either change the generational stuff or change the sin stuff as far as we can and find healing? You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's the point I was trying to make. <laughs> no, I think that's good. I think that's good. And I think it's also important too, because I feel like this generation is a little bit, at least they're the community, at least is a little bit more of a reader type of group. Mm. And I feel like that's important because when learning, when you apply, you know, you hear applied knowledge is power, but right. it's actually after you apply, you learn it, but then you apply it. You know what I mean? That's the key word is you have to apply that knowledge that you learned. And I feel like we are a generation that is trying to become better. We are really trying to better ourselves. I really feel like that. Yes, we've gone through a lot, you know, as having boomer parents and stuff like that. But I feel like sometimes we are really trying to change our generation even more so. And I feel like that was also part of the not really a purity culture, but a strive culture, I guess you could say almost mm. that was in our part of our generation. It was just to try to, you know, I mean, change it and become better and become better for the, you know, the world, as they used to say, change the world. You know, it was part of the culture thing to change the world, make the name, make the, you know, what was it? Make the, the earth better, you know? Yeah. You know, the footprint. But I feel like that's what part of our generation is though, is learning though, too. I feel like we've learned, we are a group of learners, you know, our, our generation is wanting to become better ourselves to some extent too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I totally agree. And it's just, it's interesting to see <laughs> like, you know, how those changes are happening and, and then stuff. And then I guess even on the flip side, like the changes that aren't happening, you know, within certain 
community groups and stuff. And it's just kind of like, I find myself going like, well, why aren't you doing anything about this? Like you say you want this, mm-hmm. this, this, and this. So what are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why aren't you taking the, you know, the, the proper procedures or steps? Yeah. 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 Yep. Cause sometimes we complain about it a little too much, but just want to sit on our butts and make somebody else do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then it's like, you're just going to keep complaining. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've got a rut. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, okay, I've done it myself. Like, so I'm not, I'm speaking to myself in this, in this moment too. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's part of growth. That's part of life is just finally getting to a point where you're like, okay, I'm done with this and this is what I'm going to do about it. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's very true. <laughs> Very true. Ooh, let's talk about your biggest struggle with the dating with dating currently. I think it's just honestly not meeting enough guys. I feel like sometimes then in the Christian society, I'll say it that way. I feel like there's I feel like kind of it's almost a not kind of a lost cause almost sometimes. I feel like there's not as many Christian guys around as there is women. I mean, I look mm-hmm. at our community groups and I feel like you look at the ratio and it's three to one. Yep. And Honestly, I feel like the guys aren't standing up and being the godly men that they have been called to be. I feel like they're out there, but they're, you know, hiding under a bushel, as the song <laughs> says, you know. <laughs> I feel like they're they're um undercover. I feel like they're they're closet Christians. I feel like they're not willing to step out. And yes, women, I feel like with the feminine culture that we've created, you know, from the 1950s, I feel like we've had to step out a lot, but I feel like it's time for those men to step out too, as well. Yes, we've gained a lot of stronger women. We definitely have, and that's not a bad thing, but I feel like now we need the men to step up and say, okay, you know what I mean? But I feel like, you know what I mean? The women do have the softer side as well as they are stronger than Mm -hmm. they were. You know, and I feel like there's that fine balance that has to be, but I feel like there is a lot of closet guy Christians that need to step out, you know, and it's really, I mean, yes, I was just talking to my friend about it meeting organically for her, you know, I think it's going to be the way she eventually does meet her husband, but you know what I mean? I feel like sometimes it's, it's harder for some people to do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just because of church, because of the life that they live, you know, their job, they might not, they might be working in a women, you know, in a women's you know, business or whatever. But I feel like that's, that's the thing is there's too many, there's just not enough women that, I mean, not enough men, I should say that are, that are stepping out and showing the fruit on the tree that I feel like women need to see before they can even move forward in a relationship, you know, with a a godly man. Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) I, yep. I wholeheartedly agree. It's so where, where are you located? I'm actually located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right oh, now. okay. Okay, cool. So I'm in California. Okay. <laughs> yes. It's a struggle out here. Um, <laughs> yeah. So like with like out here, yes, there are a ton of people, but I want something very specific <laughs> yeah. and probably not finding it here in this state. So it's just like the, what's the word? Um, the struggle in that aspect is like, okay, I'm open to long distance, Mm -hmm. but then that brings in its whole, whole other ball game of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Yeah. But anyway, (laughs) the, the thing that the point that I wanted to make about California and, and men is just like, I experienced that here too, of like just guys not stepping up and, you know, and it's just kind of like, okay, what the heck? Like the ratio of men to women in my church is probably more like four or five to one. Wow. And, and, and the ones are married. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's just kind of like, okay, like there's, there's very few single guys at my church Uh and I've done the church hopping thing, not necessarily just to meet a guy, but also just to see what was out there, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and, um, as far as community is concerned is what I mean. And so, you know, the, but again, like every church I walked into, it's like four or five to one. And I'm like, what is happening here? Like, where are the Christian men? Mm -hmm. And I 
I think that's the other thing about like listening to um, the What Men Think series. I'm all like, okay, so they are out there. <laughs> but where are you? <laughs> yeah, where? Where are they hiding? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. where are you people at? Like, I don't know. Yeah. No. And, and again, like the online communities and stuff, like obviously with 824, I feel like the majority of the 2,500 are women. <laughs> It's about as it is about a 70 to 30, you know. Yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, well, hey, new girlfriends, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Making some new friends, and that's a start. And at least the girlfriends, hey, they're always good to have community with, you know. <laughs> exactly. But then I'm over here, like, okay, so do some of you have single friends that you may not be interested in that you can like <laughs> hick, hook a sister up? Like, we should start exactly. training guy friends. <laughs> exactly let me help you out you help me out <laughs> yeah I'm over here like I'm willing to literally go almost anywhere in the United States <laughs> almost but yeah, a little bit of a detail there <laughs> almost I have a few a few yeah. things but you know it's like why can't we start helping each other out like <laughs> um, I don't know yeah it would be nice it would be nice maybe we should start a club <laughs> share your guy friends <laughs> if you're not interested in them share them <laughs> exactly but like I have this guy he is you know this age and this is his resume <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea I was like okay so how many guy friends do I have that I'm not interested in <laughs> <laughs> right like pull together okay so ladies what's your age yeah or like your age range roughly <laughs> and <laughs> exactly I'll write up little bios of my friends and be like hey here's one here's two here's three <laughs> <laughs> seriously like with my girls group here in california we've done that like randomly like uh -huh. or or one of the girls will like go on a date with a guy and it not quite work out for them but they'll ask i have a couple friends that have done this they'll ask that guy like hey i have other girlfriends would you mind if i like shared your profile with them and see what happens and there has actually been a couple of dates that have happened because of that. And oh, I'm like, see, funny. we should do this more. <laughs> hey, yeah, exactly. If the girl knows she's not interested, why not? You know what I mean? If he's willing. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, like that. Ha the first time it happened, I was like, this is for real. And then it kept happening. And I'm like, okay, maybe this is an idea, you know, like it yeah, needs to happen. To something to definitely consider i'm like okay yeah it's like or invite, yeah or invite your single guy friends to the groups and see what happens but it's yeah also that. that's yeah that's that's very true in that perspective invite them to the group or just stick them in you know what i mean you know, it's be like you're in i'm gonna take your basic information and put you in yes <laughs> be like hey can yeah. i see your phone real fast <laughs> exactly let me just steal your information <laughs> and grab it <laughs> <laughs> uh, seriously though it's such a struggle and I'm just like why I mean I know it's timing and all of that but it's still just kind of like where are the guys at <laughs> yeah and... I, yeah I, I mean I'm just trying to think I mean it's it's amazing how much I mean because even like you said that the community the online community of A24 I mean there's so many I mean there is a bunch of guys in there it's just I wonder you know what I mean I'm like are you I mean because I know that a lot of them are wanting to date you know mm -hmm. but I guess I mean, I think long distance scares a lot of people too. You know what I mean? I think long distance is, is it is hard. You know what I mean? There's got to be, for me at least, if I were to go long distance, there's got to be an end in sight, you know? Yeah. This is not going to be just a, you know, let's see how many years this happens. You know what I mean? It's got to be, you know, I got to have an end goal in mind with it, you know, of somebody moving or, you know, I mean, getting married at the end with a ring, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. something at least, you know what I mean? Or in that pursuit, it doesn't have to be, you know, marriage, but at least leaning towards that, you know I mean? I'm not gonna play games with it, you know, for that reason. But I do think long distance is, it is very hard. You know, I've done it before, mm -hmm. but it is something you've got to be prepared to do and understand if you're going to do it, you know, it takes commitment too. Mm -hmm. for sure yeah it takes not only like financial commitment it takes time commitment it's just like it's a whole it's a whole different ball game I've done a long distance thing too so like I've been there <laughs> but I'm also open to doing it again and so it's just like you have to find the right balance that works for that couple mm -hmm. that is very true that is very true and I think that's sometimes I don't think guys are as willing to do it you know what I mean mm -hmm. I think are more because we're more willing to give 
I think of ourselves and to some extent, you know what I mean? As far as, Hey, I'll give that option. I'll give it a try. You know, I mean, where guys are like, kind of, you know, really no thanks. I'd rather just have it organically or, you know, in front of me only, you know, mm-hmm. so I think yeah. it makes a difference. it does. It definitely does. Um, yeah, I'm always surprised like, when, I, when I make a connection with somebody long distance and then like, they're like, yeah, I'm totally for it. And then after like a little while, they realize, no, I'm not. And I'm like, then why did you even try? <laughs> I mean, I get it why they tried, but you know what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Really want to have more of a commitment from it than, oh, yeah, sure, sure. And then one week, two weeks later, nope, sorry, can't do it, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, I get it. Like we all have our things, but but again, that's a representation of life in general. There's always going to be something that's going to be pulling you away from the relationship and you have to work at it. Mm -hmm. Yep, You do. You do. It's part of the commit commitment of choosing each other daily. You know, I think is what it comes back around to. It's choosing to, you know, want to date that person, choosing to have a relationship with that person, you know, Mm -hmm. it's a choice. You know, you have a choice to do it. So it's either you're going to choose yes or you're going to choose no, you know? Yep, exactly. I mean, work, kids, family, like sickness, you know, like there's so many different, (laughs) there's so many different things that life throws our way. And it's just like, I'm just, I'm personally just so ready to choose somebody and then just let God guide it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and definitely having a God marriage is so important and having that person to rely upon too, because women do appreciate having that extra camaraderie. We'll say it that way because women are, I mean, it's easier for women to go on girls trips. It's easier for us to do a lot more of those than it is the guys as much. We just, we have a tendency to gather around each other more, you know, I mean, it's just mm-hmm. God, who God created us to be more emotional creatures, you know, more emotional than men. <laughs> and so I think that's so important. I mean, that even, you know, when I do get married, I want my husband to know that I'm going to take girl trips with my girls. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm going to be his best friend, but I'm still going to have my girl time. You know what I mean? Because I need that. And he's going to need sky time too. You know what I mean? He's going to need me to get rid of all my 10,000 words, you know, <laughs> and be able to have my time with my girls. But he, I, I also, you know, want to do everything with him as well. You know what I mean? To some extent, you know, there's that balance, but enjoying, you know, being able to have different activities like that. Mm-hmm. That is so important. It is very important. And that's like one of the big things that I learned from my parents' marriage is like they have things that they do separate. You Mm -hmm. know, my dad literally left yesterday for hunting for the next two weeks. (laughs) Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And then we're all like, okay, bye. (laughs) You know, (laughs) and then like my mom and I are leaving this next week to go do our thing. And that we do every year when they're gone, when they're gone hunting. And it's just so, it's so funny. It's like, that's just, it's what happens. It's September. So they're Mm -hmm. gone and we're gone, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and it's just like, okay, bye guys. We'll see y'all in two weeks. (laughs) You know, it's great though. It's like, I've, Because for a long time, I didn't understand it, you know, and then they finally explained it that they were like, well, it's important to have relationships outside the marriage. Yes, the marriage is the ultimate like relationship other than our relationship with God. Right. But, you know, there's still you still need to cultivate those relationships outside. And (laughs) because your husband and your wife cannot be your end all be all. One hundred percent. Yes. You know, you need to still have accountability. You still need people to bounce things off of. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you just, you just, that's what community is. <laughs> and that's how you learn also as well. You learn from each other. You learn from your girlfriends, your guy friends. You learn mm-hmm. different things that you wouldn't have known. You know what I mean? You get to see a different facet of, of life, even from your girlfriends and your guy friends, you know, outside of your marriage, you know, legitimately, you know, the girlfriends and stuff like that too. You know what I mean? But it takes, it definitely takes more than just, you know, like you said, it cannot be the end all be all. It cannot be. Otherwise your marriage is not going to survive. And it doesn't have to be the two weeks. You know what I mean? It could be two days, you know, but it just depends on how your guys, your, your relationship, your personal relationship works, you know, for your parents, it works that way. And that's amazing. They know it's every two years, you know, every September, you know, and that's awesome. That's how they've, that's how they've grown and strengthened their marriage, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm like, and they've been married almost 41 years. So <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm like, it works for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that's how, that's how, that's how, you know, they're so blessed to have such a strong marriage that way. Mm-hmm. And that makes 
huge difference. You know, I think it really does. I mean, I look back at my parents. I mean, my dad didn't do it as much, but he just wasn't a hunter, you know what I mean? All the time, but he would go out. I know there was a couple of times he took my older brother and mm-hmm. they went, um, Alaska, my mom stayed home. You know what I mean? My mom stayed home with the rest of his kids, but it was my dad, my older brother and a friend, you know, and then my little brother got to go and he got to go with my dad to Alaska, you know, but it was just boys time. They were just doing their thing, you know? And that's so, it's so refreshing to have that time away because then you come back refreshed and you come back ready and renewed for more, you know, for more excitement, for more fun and more fun adventures and excited to see the person that you haven't seen in a couple of days or, you know, a couple of weeks, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. Agreed. The, the cliche and the absence makes the heart grow fonder is very true. (laughs) In that perspective, it is 100%. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I agree. You know, it, I just wish that more people like would realize and appreciate the benefit of um, having a bigger community because I feel like that's it's so missing, not just in Christian culture, but also just culture in general. You know, the, even those who are not believers, they were created and they were created by obviously God, but like they're <laughs> they just don't realize the 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 needs Important. that are inside them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, like the need inside them for community, they just don't, they don't realize why it's there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so it's yeah. like, because we know what I, why it's there <laughs> because we were built for a relationship or we, cre- we, <laughs> we were created for a relationship, you know? And so yeah. it's like, I feel like if more, if there was a big, or, what am I trying to say? If there was a better job done by Christians, as far as like building community with those outside the church, mm-hmm. like there might actually be a bigger revival <laughs> than, you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. might actually be able to bring more people to the kingdom instead of focusing on not having any community period, you know? And yeah. I think that's, that even kind of rolls it through the aspect of, you know, if we had a, if we did a better job of it, I think there would be a lot more godly men stepping up to the plate. You know what I mean? I really feel like that would not be because I feel like we have, we as women have squashed them to some extent. Yes. You know, I do honestly feel like that because we are, and yes, there is a fine balance of yes, equality. Yes. But there's also that very fine line where we as women have taken over and become the leaders of the household. And Mm -hmm. I do believe we are not supposed to be leaders. We're supposed to be supporters together. We are not supposed to be, you know, I had this discussion already with another friend of mine. I mean, it's not about being equal. You know, there's always, there's going to be, you're going to be side by side. We'll say it that way. But somebody also always has to make a decision. You know, a leader, if you talk about missions, you know, there's, if you talk about mission, you know, there is one mission, there's one head that ultimately does make the ultimate decision. That's God, Mm -hmm. of course. But then also, you know what I mean? I feel like, you know, yes, there's that fine balance of both together, but it's coming together and praying about it, coming together as one person and going, okay, what do you feel like discussing it out? Because I feel like sometimes we try to run ahead. Women, Mm -hmm. we women, you know, I've seen that in my mom and dad's relationship. You know, I saw that where my mom was like, Hey honey, I'm so sorry. You know, I kind of had to explain to her that she was, you know, she was trying to run herself as the engine. My dad was a caboose. He moved very slowly. (laughs) He doesn't move here as fast as she does, you know, with stuff when they made decisions, you know, and I had to, I was like, you've got to realize that it takes him a long time to make a decision, but once he makes it, it's a firm out decision for him. You know, but I feel like, you know, and then I, I say this in love because I know my parents, have, you know, they're fine with it. And I explain my mom laughs about it now. But, you know, I mean, it was the fact that my mom was just trying to make decisions as fast as she could. And she wasn't waiting for my dad. You know what I mean? And it really made a difference. I saw a difference. And when she did realize understanding that it was them doing it together and how to speak to my dad. Mm. You know, comes down to where they had the communication. Then she was like, oh, this makes total sense. And they were able to do things better because of them working together instead of my mom trying to take over as a lot of, sadly, a lot of women do that. We do try to run the household. And I feel like sometimes we don't have the backup, you know, as a, when married couples, they don't always have the backup of the spouse. I feel like it's got to be side by side. You've got to do it together. Otherwise, it's not, you're not going to be able to accomplish the mission that God has called you to do together. Amen. Like in that kind of like that connects back into being equally yoked, right? Where yeah. you you want to make sure that that person that you're marrying is going to be on board with how you feel like the kids need to be raised, (laughs) you know, like whether that's discipline, how schooling happens, like, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever. 
um, holidays. Like, are they, we going to let them watch Disney movies? You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's just, <laughs> there's so many different aspects to that. So they feel like a lot of couples don't ever get to until it's like they're in the moment and then one feels one way about it. And then the other one feels the opposite. And then you have this like clash of yeah. issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This divide, especially like, I've noticed this with just like friends and family, especially when it comes to like how you discipline as a parent, you know, I feel like that's such a, <laughs> yep. that's a huge thing, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and like when you have one parent who's like super, super passive and then the other parent who is like, um, no, like you're not going to treat me that way and you're going to be respectful and, you know, whatever. And not necessarily as a harder parent, but just kind of comes is like sets that boundary, I guess, is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Uh-huh. And so, you know, that causes so many issues among the couple and among the kids because they're mm-hmm. going to start pitting you against your significant other if they realize that that's how things go (laughs) yeah that's very true that is very true and it's not that hard you know when you see it's easy when you want something and you see an opportunity you know kids are going to take it kids are smarter than a lot of parents give them credit for people give them credit for Mm -hmm. they know because that's part of our sadly it's part of our human nature that we were given when we we're born because the world that we live in you know we have a manipulative nature so it's up to us to train it into becoming godly you know person but we are situated that way as a child you know it's easy and once you see it it's easy to run with it you know mm-hmm. and they will run <laughs> and <Very> run <laughs> And yes. keep running. <laughs> and I think that that kind of brings it around. To, I mean, I, you don't mind. I'm just, um, you were, t- you asked a question about love languages, you know and I mean? Oh, I feel yes. like understanding, understanding first and foremost, your personality though, and each understanding your spouse's personality is so important. You know, um, I read a book by, uh, per- called personalities, personality plus it's an amazing book. But once I read it, I was like, Oh, that's why I do what I do. You know what I mean? It gave me a better understanding. I could pick out people and be like, Oh, you're so-and-so you are so-and-so you are so-and-so. And I think that made a huge difference for me understanding what, who I am first and foremost and God, but then also my personality of why I have a tendency to react the way I do. Yeah. And then mixing it in with my love languages has made a difference. You know, it makes a huge difference when I understand who I am, you know, in that perspective and what kind of, you know, how I'm going to react against certain things for my spouse, you know, when I do get married. And I think that makes a huge difference when you understand the personality first and foremost of who you are, and then you can understand other people's personalities. And then also your love languages of knowing, you know, what is important to you. Cause that makes a huge difference in marriage, you know, for my parents, you know, I mean, I saw that once my mom understood personality, she was able to do it better because she understood, Hey, this is the way he reacts. You know, this is the way, you know, Mm -hmm. Love languages work and it made a huge difference. It made a huge difference, especially when you can. When I was 13, um, God laid it on my heart to tell my family that I loved them physically. I mean, tell it, tell it verbally, I should say, you know, show it physically, but also verbally. And that was never a big deal in my family. But mm-hmm. that made a huge difference in my family, understanding that, you know, understanding the love languages that God had put in my heart to share and express to my family. But I saw a turning point in my family's life after that, you know what I mean? And that's where, so five, um, the love language is so important to me, especially in that aspect of understanding, you know what I mean? How to give it and how to receive it. But mm-hmm. it is so impactful in people's lives that I really feel like people don't have a true understanding of how much it really affects relationships even. Mm-hmm. Because when you give and you receive in different ways too, it also affects how you your love tank is, if it's full or if it's empty, how you're going to react against your spouse so much more. That makes a huge difference whether or not you're going to sometimes even survive in a marriage because if your love tank is not full, it's easy to get offended. It's easy to walk away because that person is not showing the love that you need. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. So sorry. I was like, Oh, I was like, oh, good question. <laughs> Go into that. All that. <laughs> no, that's perfect. <laughs> I love talking about the love languages and to like, kind of make the connection to what you just said. I, when I learned what they were and then looking at my parents, I was like, Oh, because (laughs) as if like young, you know, this young teen going, I get it now. Like, no wonder my dad or my mom reacts a certain way with certain scenarios. Like my dad is acts of service to the T. Okay. Uh And that is not even close on mine. Like I'm 
physical touch <laughs> and quality time. And then followed very close. Those two are tied. And then followed very closely by words of affirmation. So, uh-huh. you know, where he's quality time. So that was fine for us. Like quality time. Yeah. You know, it was great. But acts of service, I was like, what the heck is this? Like, what? what do you mean? I have to do something to let this other person know I love them. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so but once I realized that, I was like, oh, so now, like to this day, uh-huh. uh, you know, if I know he's had a very hard day or he's just been under a lot of stress or whatever, I'm like, OK, um, I'm cleaning something or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm making him something or whatever, because I'm uh-huh. just going to show you that I love you. But I'm also going to ask for a hug because that's my thing. And then we'll sit down and yeah. watch elk movies together, you know, or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then then we're all good in the hood. And like, he feels great. I feel great. Hey, thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the stories and the perspectives that were shared in this episode. Please share it with a friend whose dating life might need some help. Wink, wink. If you want to connect with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at an epiph with Tiff. I really hope to see you there. There are multiple ways that you can support my show. You can pray for me, rate, review, and share any episode that you love. Or you can even financially contribute by going to patreon.com slash an epiphany with Tiffany. Until next time, I'm Tiffany, and I hope you just had an epiphany. Oh.